unmanned ground vehicles or UGVs are getting more and more use in Ukraine, and they're pretty versatile. From casualty evacuation to logistical support, laying landmines, even direct assault operations. So to learn more about the current state of how UGVs are being used, we're talking today with Andre, the chief engineer of a dedicated drone unit in the Ukrainian 93rd Mechanized Brigade. Now, this interview is part of an ongoing fundraiser through Ukraine Aid Operations, where we're working to pick up drones for units defending in the east around Kramatorsk. UAO is a registered 501c3, so your donations are fully tax deductible. And for this campaign, we actually have a one-to-one -one donor match. So your contributions here go twice as far. If interested and able to donate, that link is in the description below. And with that, let's get to the conversation. All right, Andre, thank you so much for taking the time, man. UGVs, unmanned ground vehicles, ground robots. I know that's your specialty. That's what you focus on. Can you tell us a little bit how that technology is being utilized today? Uh, in today, we have uh, UGV for evacuation, for engineering mission, for uh, logistic, uh, for assault. Um, uh, for example, uh, UGVs um, can uh, uh, delivers supplies and uh, ammunition uh, evacuated uh, wounded sol soldier uh, can um, uh, how it um, uh, can deploy in uh, concertina wire uh, concertina wire string wire up outside of a yeah, position it, yeah. it's uh, it's some engineer mission uh, can uh, be equipment uh, with uh, machine gun or uh, uh, fire thrower, fire gun. Rockets? Uh, yeah, maybe rockets, maybe rockets uh, from uh, helicopter, from uh, tanks. Those are the assault versions. Yeah. We, we haven't seen, I feel like we've seen a lot used for logistics and for medevac, I can understand how those would be utilized not as much for engineering and assaults. Maybe they are getting used that much and we're just not seeing that footage, but are the majority of the missions more logistics and medical, or is it pretty evenly spread? Uh at now we started uh, use much for assault uh, but before yeah uh, was be or where be uh, so much mission uh, logistic logistic and engineer can you talk a little bit about how these are being used for assault because i know when people think of robots in war that's the first thing they think of they don't think of all of the logistics and medical and engineering work. They think of a machine gun on top of a robot. Are these going out in front of the troops in an area that's dangerous? Are they right alongside the soldiers? How do you use these in assault operations? Uh, drones, it's not a people. Uh, they, can, uh, they, they can be... Uh, uh, under uh, fire and um, for a first we uh, equip UGVs uh, to red uh, and uh, machine gun like uh, M2240 uh, uh, or uh, M2 and um, goes to the front line and uh, we uh, it, it's a support fire, support fire for uh, people who takes uh, um, uh, who, who goes near or uh, after than our UGVs. Who's controlling that then? So let's say I'm on an assault operation and I've got a robot next to me. Am I controlling that? Is somebody with me controlling it, or is it someone? A little ways back in a headquarters. Uh, we have commander who controls this. Um, we prepare the drone, uh, check up, and go to the mission. 
commander uh, says uh, what we have do we and uh, the people who goes after us. So you would have somebody at the front being able to say, you know, I'm next to the robot. We need you to shoot at that building. And that would get relayed to the people controlling the drone? Uh, yeah, people control the drone, but uh, this is not in time. Um, at first, the drone goes to the front line in the battlefield. Uh, maybe after the maybe after the same hour, mm. uh, goes people. Gotcha. So they are being used a little bit out in front kind of the first yeah. ones into some areas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh first one uh, for save uh, people life. I uh, no, soldier life. Are there are there places where these UGVs don't work? Like I'm thinking you would send um, them through a field that would probably be okay, but what about trenches or cities or destroyed towns? Are there times where it just won't move forward? Uh, cities, it's okay for UGVs. It's work uh, definitely okay in cities, uh, but uh, uh, in maybe mood, uh, UGV mm. don't uh, don't try it uh, in mood. And there's a bunch of different types of UGVs, is that correct? Some have tracks, some have wheels, some are big, some are small. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We we have uh, much big UGVs, uh, but it's uh, um, it's especially for day and uh, for work um, uh, before frontline. Uh, maybe uh, 10, 12 kilometers uh, because uh, air drones uh, uh, saw uh, the, the, this UGV and uh, get a damage. Uh, middle UGVs, uh, this most uh, most used for us. I've I've seen some videos of UGVs with explosives on them or landmines is that something you guys use as well uh explodes uh, it's uh, it's middle ugvs uh middle ugvs but uh, but it's uh, about uh, 150 uh, kilos bomb that's big <laughs> no for, for ground drone it's middle <laughs> really yeah Big, it's uh, about uh, 500. 500 kilograms? Yeah. That's a big, that's a bet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? That would be, I mean, would, that would be going in to take out a building or something, right? About that size? Uh, yeah, we, we can uh, go uh, in a building. Uh, we, we can explode the building, uh, but it's uh, still middle UGVs. I was at an event a few months ago where we're talking about small UGVs for the most part, but they had tanks that were technically ground drones, but they were tanks. Have you guys messed around at all with that, with getting two larger vehicles that normally would be driven around by people? Uh, if we uh, take a large um, vehicle, we... Uh don't care uh, don't, don't can uh, ride uh, to the zone uh, to the front line uh, fpv detected us uh, if we uh, used a small drone very small um, uh, should, uh, it's it's don't uh, go in front line because uh, it's uh, very difficult uh, mm. um, about ground uh, gr ground situation <laughs> i told it like that. harder to see the small ones oh, yeah gotcha okay yeah these were fascinating they were it, they were tanks or infantry fighting vehicles but like 80 percent the size of a normal one because there was no need for a driver's compartment so they were still big but not as big as like a normal tank 
We have a, a UGV uh, pickup. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's too large. <laughs> it's too large. It's not for the front line. Maybe it's for the shows, but not for work. <laughs> yeah, not right now. That's not the best method right now. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Well, Andre, man, I really appreciate it. This was... There's a lot of stuff I didn't know, and I'm sure the audience will be interested to learn this as well. So thank you so much for taking the time to walk through all this. Yeah, I, I hope I'm uh, not doing mistakes <laughs> in the words. You know. <laughs> You're good. I understood it. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. <laughs> Thanks for my teacher. <laughs> so thank you again so much to Andre, the 93rd Mechanized Brigade, and of course Ukraine Aid Operations for helping to facilitate this interview. I think it's always really interesting to try to stay on top of how some of this wartime innovation is shaking out and how better to do that than to talk to the guys actually putting in the work day in and day out. Again, if interested and able to contribute to this ongoing fundraiser, that will be linked in the description and pinned comment below. But that's all we got for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.